talk about what you did here. Um, when you add and subtract fractions, you have to have a common denominator that is true across all types of fractions, whether it's just numeric fractions or polynomial fractions, which is what we're about to do. Um, and so when you do that, you basically find um, the factors. You don't really necessarily know that's what you're doing, but that's the, the root of what you're doing. So if I were to take these two, the factors here are 3 and 5. The factors here are 5 and 5. All right? You can write the 3 times 5 and 5 squared. Okay. The truth is when you find your common denominator, you have to have one of everything. Okay. And if something is taken to a power, you have to use that one. So I have to have at least one three and I have to have a five, but because I have five squared in there, I actually have to use the highest of the exponents here. And that is how I got my uh, common denominator of 75. You're just taking the factors and using one of every factor. And if a factor is repeated, um, you have to use the highest exponent of that factor. That's how you find common denominators or least common multiples. All right. And so <clears throat> we take that concept and we move it to uh, finding least common multiples of polynomials. So look at page 505, example two. Find the least common multiple of 4x squared minus 36 and 6x squared plus 36x plus 54. All right. So what we need to do here is we need to factor all of these. All right. So we are going to take this first expression here and we are going to factor that. And then we are going to take the second expression and we are going to factor that. All right. And so we take those individually and factor them. So for the first one, what can I take out of 4x squared and 36? A 4, all right? So I can take a 4 out, and I'm left with x squared minus 9. Can I continue to factor that? Yes, it's a special case. What is x squared minus 9? X plus 3, x plus 3. There we go. Let's look at the second one. Can anything come out of 6, 36, and 54? A 6, right? Six. I'm left with x squared plus 6x plus 9, right? Can that continue to factor? Factors of 9 that add up to 6. All right. Another way to write that. Squared. Correct? All right. Um, if I were to continue on with my concept of factoring... 4 is technically 2 squared, correct? Mm -hmm. um, I have x plus 3, x minus 3. 6 is 2 times 3, x plus 3 squared. These are my prime factors of those. Everybody see that, all right? I have to use one of every one of these factors, okay, to get my common denominator, to get my least common multiple. And so I'm going to go through these, and I'm going to use one of each. I have twos. I have a two squared here and a two here. I have to use the highest exponent of any multiples that are repeated here. What's my highest exponent there? Two squared. So two squared is going to be in my common denominator. All right. Um, I have to use the three. What's my highest exponent of my three? Just the three. So three is going to be in my common denominator here. Um, I have to use x plus 3. x plus 3, there's an x plus 3 squared here. What am I going to use? x plus 3 squared. And I have to use x minus 3. There's only one of those. Um, so this would be my common least common multiple. If I were to multiply it out, you don't have to like, I'm not going to make you foil these, but you would want to rewrite this. 2 times 2 times 3 is what? 12, right? And you typically write without the exponent first, so x minus 3, x plus 3 squared. But this would be my least common multiple between those two. You have to factor everything you have to use one of each factor, okay?
So if I add these two, what do I have to have since they are in fraction form, rational form? We have to have a common denominator. And so the first step in, find, in, in having a common denominator is finding the common denominator. And so to find this common denominator, I am going to factor each piece. I'm going to factor this. How does this factor? Four and one. How does this factor? So if I am looking at my common denominator here, my common denominator, it's going to be three. Mm -hmm. Yes, x plus one just once, right? Because it's to the first power for both of those. And x plus four. That is my common denominator, all right? And then I take each piece of the numerator. So I'm gonna say this numerator right here, one. And I'm gonna look at its denominator. I have the x plus 1, I have the x plus 4. What am I missing? What am I missing on this one for the common denominator? 3, right? I'm missing a 3. Everybody see that? Of the denominator, I, I still need a 3. So I have to multiply the top and bottom by what I'm missing, 3. I'm going to use the same sign that it gives me right here, plus. Then I'm going to use this numerator, 5x. What is this movement? I have the three. I have an x plus one. What am I missing on this one? X plus four. The x plus four. So far, so good? You multiply by what you're missing, all right? And then I simplify. One times three is three. I'm going to distribute here. Five x times x. Five x times four. I can leave the denominator factored. I do not require that you go back and FOIL it. I do want the numerator in standard form, though. So we're going to say 5x squared plus 20x plus 3 over and leave this in factored form is perfectly fine. And that would be my final answer here. That would be the addition of those two fractions. What am I missing here? So um, I look at this, this fraction right here, that numerator, and then I'm going to take the denominator. In this denominator, originally, I had the x plus 1 from my denominator, and I have the x plus 4 from my denominator. I did not have the 3. So that's what I have to multiply by, the 3. Okay? Where did you get the 3 is what I found the this from? From the other side. because I got a common denominator. Oh. Okay. I found my common denominator right here. Oh, okay. I found my common denominator and I wrote it out. And now I'm going to go back to each of these. What is it missing from the common denominator? This is missing the 3 from the common denominator. This is missing the x plus 4 from the common denominator. So oh. this numerator was multiplied by the 3. And this numerator was multiplied by the x plus 4. Subtractions handle the exact same way, but you just have to pay attention to your positives and negatives. That negative goes through to the entire second group, okay? So we treat it the exact same. We are going to factor these. Factor out your five. Y plus five, Y minus five. And then this is going to be three. Y plus 5 for that one. All right, so my common denominator is going to be 3 times 5 times Y plus 5 times Y minus 5. All right, that takes care of all of those. That is my common denominator. I'll simplify that in a minute. I'm going back up to the 7Y. 
All right, if I look, I have the 5, the y plus 5, and the y minus 5. All right, so 7y, if I look at this one, my denominator has the 5, the y plus 5, and the y minus 5. It is just missing the 3. You see that? I have the 5, y plus 5, y minus 5. I'm just missing the 3 from this one. So that's what I'm going to multiply by. I'm going to multiply by the 3. Subtract. 4. So let's look at this one, the 4. For this denominator, I have the 3. I am missing the 5. Right? I have the y plus 5. I'm missing the y minus 5. I'm going to simplify this. So 7y and 3 is 21y. I am distributing a negative 20 here. This is negative 20. So negative 20 times y is negative 20y. Negative 20 times negative 5 is positive 100. And then I can go ahead and simplify my denominator at this point. I left it out like this because I wanted to see the 3 and the 5 separately when I figured out what was missing. But 3 times 5, you can write it as 15. And you can say y plus 5, y minus 5. And then we can go ahead and simplify that numerator. 21y minus 20y is just y. The 100 doesn't simplify. 15y plus 5, y minus 5. And that's my final answer there. Wait, what was your answer? Complex fractions. It's a fraction that is a fraction in its numerator or denominator or in both its numerator and its denominator. Here are some examples of complex fractions. 1 over x over y. 3 over 1 minus 1 over 2y. And then this big thing over here that looks like apparently Donkey Kong. x minus 2 over x. Minus 2 over x plus 1 over 3 over x minus 1 minus 1 over x plus 1. Um, these are complex fractions for a reason, right? Obviously, the name lends itself to what it looks like, right? The truth is that they are not written in simplest form. So think of these as though they were two-fourths. We would not leave it as two-fourths. We would leave it as one-half. We would simplify it. And so when you are doing these, you are not solving for x. Um, you are strictly trying to simplify the fraction so that it's just one numerator over one denominator. That is your goal with complex fractions to rewrite them so that they are one numerator over one denominator and not multiple numerators and denominators going on, all right? And so there's a couple ways to do this. Um, the first way is to simplify the top and then simplify the bottom and then do a keep change flip. The other way is to simplify it all at one time. And so I'm gonna show you both methods and then you can do whichever method you prefer. And sometimes one method is easier over another, it just depends. So let's look at this example here. Simplify 1 over x plus 3 over 5 over y plus 4. Now, the first way you can do this is you can find the common denominator between every single piece of it, okay? So, if I look at this, my denominator for 1 over x, what's the denominator there? x. x. What's the denominator of 3? 4. What's the denominator of just the 3? 1. 3 over 1. So if it's 1, we don't have to worry about it because 1's not going to change my common denominator. What's the denominator of 5 over y? y? And what's the denominator of 4? Just 1. So my common denominator here between all of this is xy. All right? And so what I can do is I can take this right here and I can multiply every single piece of it by the xy. So I can multiply this times xy. I can multiply this times xy. I can multiply that times xy, and I can multiply that times xy, okay? Now, let's look at the first one. 1 over x times xy. xy is over 1. What happens here? I can cross cancel, can't I? I can cross cancel the x's, and I'm left with just 1 times y. That's just a y. 3 times xy. Well, that's just, I'm going to use this plus, by the way, plus. I just have 3xy. 
correct? That's the numerator. Let's look at the denominator. This is x, y over 1. What can cancel here? My y's can cancel. I'm left with just 5x. And then here, I have a plus 4xy. All right? That is one numerator over one denominator, is it not? That is as simple as I can get this. If you multiply everything by the common denominator, all of your denominators will go away. That is true of all fractions, okay? If you multiply fractions by a common denominator, your denominator will go away. And so that's what I've done. I've multiplied every piece by a common denominator, and my denominators went away, and I just had one numerator over one denominator. That is the first method. This method is sometimes the easiest method. There's a second method, which is sometimes easier, especially when you get to larger ones. All right, so let's look at this one more time. I flip back here. The other way to do this is to get a common denominator on the numerator and then a common denominator on the denominator and then just do keep change flip, all right? So let's look at this one. Just the numerator here. What is my common denominator? One times x, right? So I already have one over x. What do I need to multiply this three by to get it over x? Yeah, so I get three x over x, right? plus 3x over x. So that becomes 1 plus 3x over x. All right, let's look at the denominator. What's my common denominator here between y and 1? Y. y. So what do I need to multiply the 4 by? Y, y. y over y. So I get 5 over y plus 4y over y, which is going to be 5 plus 4y over y. That is my numerator. That is my denominator. And then I'm, so now I have it, I have the numerator simplified to a numerator over denominator. And I have the denominator simplified to a numerator, numerator over denominator. Now I can do keep, change, flip, okay? Keep the first one, 1 plus 3x over x. Change to multiplication and flip the second one, y over 5 plus 4y. Keep change flip, all right? And then I just multiply. Multiply the y through, y times 1 plus y times 3x. Then I multiply the x through, x times 5, x times 4y. And that is my answer. And if you look, that is what we got before. They're the same. So they both work.